If you're not using Next.js and you're using a modern web stack, you're probably using something powered by Vite. It's quickly become the standard for bundling your applications, and it is the standard for a reason. It's really, really good. I still remember the days of the chaos around Webpack. I even was an early Snowpack user, which, fun history lesson, Snowpack was created by the same people that Astro was. Obviously, Astro has been more successful. You'll have probably never even heard of Snowpack. I know not many have, but Vite was the thing that appeared that won. It's a phenomenal technology for bundling your client-side apps. But I said something very specific there. Client-side apps. Vite's never really understood servers all that great, and we've had to hack all around it to make code that works both on the server and on the client for things like, I don't know, ever heard of server components? We have a lot to talk about here because Vite v6 changes all of this and then some. I am genuinely really hyped for this release and not just for Vite itself, but what this will enable for new frameworks going forward. It's a very, very exciting future. But do you know what else I'm excited about? Today's sponsor. <sighs> My man, where are you? Sorry, man. I've just been waiting on this build for like an hour. The build times are killing me. I'm beginning to regret this Rust rewrite. Bro, have you tried Blacksmith yet? It's gnarly. What's Blacksmith? They run your GitHub Actions for you, but they're way faster and cheaper. They cut Tokyo's build times nearly in half. That's cool, but I don't have time to set up another runner. But it's so simple, man. It just takes two clicks and they even open the PR for you. Here, I'll do it on my phone quick. What? Wait, your builds are failing right now? Thank you to Blacksmith for sponsoring today's video. Let's dive in. I've been waiting for this one for a minute. Today, we're taking another big step in Vite's story. The Vite team, contributors, and ecosystem partners are excited to announce the release of Vite 6. It's been an eventful year. Vite adoption keeps growing, with NPM downloads per week jumping from 7.5 million to 17 million since the release of Vite 5 a year ago. Vitest is not only being favored more by users, but it's also starting to form an ecosystem of its own. For example, Storybook has new testing capabilities powered by Vitest. I'm kind of known as the like anti-Storybook guy. Storybook kind of sucks. But they don't adopt new things. So if they're adopting Vitest, it says a lot of good about it and how valuable it is. It's really cool. I hope they fix the parallel problems that existed before. I'm assuming they have, but y'all know how often I'm doing my testing nowadays. New frameworks have also joined the Vite ecosystem, including Tanstack Start, one, Ember, and more. Web frameworks are innovating at an increasingly fast pace. You can check out the improvements that folks have been doing over at Astro, Nux, SvelteKit, Solid Start, QuickCity, RedwoodJS, React Router, and more. A couple of these have been blocked a bit by Vite, which we'll get to momentarily. Vite's used by OpenAI, Google, Apple, Microsoft, NASA, Shopify, Cloudflare, GitLab, Reddit, Linear, among many others. Hey, I use it a bit too. I can I see Ping in there? I, I get it. Ping's not quite as big as Apple or NASA. It is what it is. Two months ago, we started a list of companies that are using Beat. We're happy to see so many developers sending us PRs to add their companies to the list. It's hard to believe how much the ecosystem that we built together has grown since Beat gave its first steps. Yeah, what a chart. Fun fact, I started using Beat here. Because if I recall, this was around when Evan first announced that they built a React bundler for it, because previously Vite was just for Vue. It was trying to take advantage of ES Build to make a better Vue dev experience. And now it's used by a lot more stuff. But it's fun to see the, the growth since then, especially as a, an overly early adopter. Speeding up the Vite ecosystem. Last month, the community gathered for the third edition of VeetConf, hosted once more by StackBlitz. Huge shout out to StackBlitz. They've been sponsoring stuff for a bit now. They make awesome things. You might have even seen Bolt.new. Probably not the sponsor of this video, but they know what they're doing. Bolt's open source, by the way, which I think is really, really cool. Regardless, StackBlitz, they understand the importance of this ecosystem. They're invested. They're putting their money where their mouth is. I have a Vite shirt that StackBlitz paid for, which I think is really cool. As Evan says here, it was the biggest Vite conference with a broad representation of builders from the ecosystem. Among other announcements, Evan announced Void Zero, which is a company dedicated to building an open source, high performance and unified development tool chain for the JavaScript ecosystem. Void Zero is the company that's behind Rolldown and OXC, and their team is making significant strides, getting them rapidly ready for being adopted by Vite. If you're curious, I covered this all in depth in the Void Zero video that I did, but the quick TLDR is that Vite right now uses two bundlers under the hood. It uses ES build during dev, where it creates a new file for every single one of the things that you are bundling from your app. So every file in your JavaScript becomes a file inside of your browser, which is great because it's way less work to bundle and way less that has to be updated when changes happen. But it also sucks because if you have thousands of files in your project, 
you can't just send thousands of files down to your user. That the unbundle dream is a myth for big code bases. It just doesn't work that way. As such, rollup is what they use for production. So you still get the benefits of a single bundle, but it comes with a catch. It's a different build tool and it's nowhere near as fast as ES build, which was written in Go. So you get used to the dev experience in ES build when you're building it on your machine. And when you go to ship to production, it's way slower and has different bundling characteristics because rollup is a different bundler than ES build. There's an obvious solution here. What if we just rewrote rollup to be way faster by writing it in Rust? Super easy fix, right? Yeah, yeah. it's happening. It's way further along than I would have expected. And I'm quite excited for roll down, which is that roll up rewrite in Rust to be the default for both dev and production. So we get the fast speeds in dev and a reliable environment in prod. I'm excited for that to be what Vite's built on. That is not what happened with V6 though. So don't think that we just got that. It's, it's not ready yet. A bunch of other things were announced there. Really cool stuff. They also got a fun new homepage and a much better domain. The new Vite site is absolutely stunning. I think it's beautiful. They did a great job with this one. But we need to talk about what's actually changing here. We have the getting started, node support. Here's what I was baiting earlier. Here's what we're all here for. This is what I am very, very excited about. Vite is getting more flexible with the new environment API. What is an environment? Is it like an ENV ver? No. Environment is a place that your JavaScript code runs. Up until now, Vite's experience and focus has been around one runtime, the browser's runtime. It builds your JavaScript from your project and spits it out in a way that you can run it in the browser pretty well. But more and more now, we're not running our JavaScript just in the browser. And I don't just mean spinning up an express server in Node. I mean, we write code in one code base that runs in multiple places. Maybe it runs on the edge for your workers or for your middleware. Maybe it also runs on a dedicated server for the core node parts and to do your server rendering. And then obviously it runs on the client once the user gets the payload. So how do we use Vite to orchestrate all of these parts around? The answer is with a lot of pain. Nikhil built a tool called Vinci, which is a SDK around Vite to solve a lot of these problems for you to allow for the building of full stack apps. It uses Vite and Nitro as their attempt to make it so you can run one code base in multiple places and split it up in different ways, but it's work. A lot of things are built on top of Vinci, like Tanstack Start, Solid Start, and more. But this is, to be frank, a pile of, I don't want to call them hacks, but they're certainly workarounds because Vite was not built to do this. Now, Vite's kind of built to do this with the environment API. As they call out, these new APIs will allow for framework authors to offer a different dev experience closer to production, as well as for the ecosystem to start building and sharing new building blocks. Nothing changes if you're building a single page app. So if you're using Vite as a create React app alternative to just spit out a single HTML file with a JavaScript bundle that loads the rest of your experience, this is not gonna affect you at all beyond making it theoretically slightly easier to get off that old way of building sooner than later. It shouldn't be so hard to move from client everything to a client server hybrid. This is going to make it a lot easier. If you were curious why Remix still doesn't have server components, this is why we've all been waiting for the environment API. This is the article about increasing Vite's potential with the environment API that was linked in that main announcement. The important detail here that I am the most invested in is that a single application now often needs to handle multiple bundles. At the end of 2020, server components were announced. And if you want to use them, you'll need to bundle for RSC separately from both client bundles, as well as for the traditional SSR bundle. That means you might need up to three different bundles for one application. And if your tools aren't built to handle that, you're kind of SOL. Next.js is as much a compiler and build tool as it is a framework nowadays because they've hacked Webpack so hard that they built their own from scratch with TurboPack. It's not easy to get these parts working. And it's a big part of why Next is the only real way right now to go all in on server components because they built all of these things. Vite's assumption was that this would never be a thing. They kind of gave SSR and they kind of gave browser support and treated them as separate, unrelated things. These hybrid approaches and these many bundle approaches were not a thing Vite was architected for. So building Next on top of Vite, it would not have been fun. That's the goal of these changes, though. It makes it a lot easier. So for the basic SPA example, we have code that the browser gets. We have the browser, and then you get the code that the browser needs through this HTTP layer. To execute code from the browser, the browser sends an HTTP request to Vite's code transformer, and the transform code is ex executed by the browser. But when you also have SSR, we now have this code transformer that has to generate 
code for the server, execute it, and then send the HTML that it gets back down to the browser. And then it needs to get the same JavaScript to make the page work. In case you haven't caught up on what SSR means, usually the term SSR means taking a client side application and running it once on the server so the HTML isn't an empty file. If you go to a site like twitch.tv, which by the way, is where I'm currently streaming myself recording this live. So if you want to watch me as I do these things, twitch.tv slash Theo, this HTML file that we just got back from Twitch has almost no data in it once you kill all of these weird script tags. I deleted everything from that HTML that was JavaScript or CSS. So this is the HTML you get when you go to the Twitch site. This is it. That's all of it. It's about 40 lines of HTML and it's just shells because that's all Twitch sends. The rest is JavaScript that you have to load on the client side in order to run the actual page. So there is a bunch of script tags in here that say which JavaScript needs to be fetched and downloaded so the user can have the full Twitch experience. But if you turn off JavaScript on Twitch, you just end up looking at that empty loading page forever because that's all Twitch is. That's all the HTML it sends. Twitch is not a server rendered application. Twitch is a client rendered application. If Twitch was to move to server rendering, you would get the full HTML that traditionally you would get once the JavaScript spins up and loads. But now you could get that as the first content you get from the server, which is really important for things like marketing pages, home pages, quick navigation, low internet speed environments. There's a lot of reasons that you want to render the right HTML when the user goes to the page instead of empty HTML that then loads the JavaScript that takes over from there. And doing this was never fun. That's why Next exists. That's why SSR is a concept. You just take that React code and run it once on the server before sending the HTML. So the HTML actually has something in it. But that means we're running the same code in both environments. So Vite's SSR allows you to take that code that you bundled and run it on the server and on the client. But it has no concept of code that only runs on one side or the other side because SSR just means running client code on the server one time. Also interesting is that the code transformer that actually changes that JavaScript code to do the right thing was in Node. So you could only use this in Node projects. You couldn't use it in other runtimes at all. Now, these layers have all been separated so you can do whatever you want. You can put different code in different layers. You can run them with different runtimes. You can do whatever you want and even define your own method to call between them. As a result of allowing the server side below to be swapped, we noticed that the processing for the browser code is essentially the same as in the server code. So now this can be much simpler. Here's another real fun one. They give the example of running code on a Hano server as the origin and then running Hano on Cloudflare workers as an edge server as well. And also potentially running Hano on a service worker in the browser and also separately running the script that Hano is using in the browser. So now you can reuse the same JavaScript logic in all these different places in all of these different ways, all as part of the Vite environment API. Really cool stuff. Back to the actual article about Vite 6 though, there's a lot of good callouts here. As they say, if you're a framework author or a Vite plugin maintainer and you want to leverage the new stuff, go check out those guides. There's a lot of good info there. And a huge call out here, Nuxt is largely responsible for this. It's kind of funny to think that the most likely path for us to get better alternatives to Next that are server component first is actually going to happen because of Nuxt's hard work. I know the Nuxt team has not always had the best relationship with Vite and especially the Vue team because there wasn't necessarily this buy-in on server rendering at the time. Since then, this is more and more obviously the future and they're getting much more support from all around. And huge, huge shout out to Ant Fu and Puya. These two have been working so hard to make this happen, both to make Nuxt's SSR story better, but also to better the ecosystem as a whole. It would have been very easy for these guys to keep this all to themselves and build it around their framework, but instead they made it an open standard as part of Vite for everyone to benefit from. And it's awesome both that the Vite ecosystem and maintainers were willing to take these changes and do them, but also that the whole ecosystem now gets to benefit. Like we, we just went from years away from a good RSC framework that isn't next to months, if not weeks away. I'm even tempted to go build one myself and I don't want to build a fucking framework. At the beginning of 2023, Vladimir started working to upstream Vite node to Vite core. We released it as a runtime API in Vite 5.1 a year later. Feedback from the ecosystem partners, special shout out to the Cloudflare team, pushed us to do a more ambitious rework of the Vite environment. You can learn more about that in Patak's talk. I haven't actually watched that and I'm very tempted to. He's a legend. He helps maintain all this shit. Also, Vladimir has been killing it too. This is an awesome crew of people and I love they're calling them out by name for the work that they're doing. We need more of that in the world.
everyone on the Veet team participated in designing the new API, which was co-designed with feedback from many projects in the ecosystem. Thanks to everyone involved. We encourage you to get involved if you're building a framework, plugin, or tool on top of Veet. The new APIs are experimental. We will work with the ecosystem to review how the new APIs will be used and stabilize them for the next major. Just as a quick example of the types of things that these changes are going to enable, Tanstack Start isn't going to have adapters. Previously, with things like Remix or Tanstack Start, if you wanted to deploy it on Vercel, you would install the Vercel adapter. If you wanted to throw it on Cloudflare, you'd install the Cloudflare adapter. These were bundler plugins that made it so your code could run in different places. And maintaining them was obnoxious because all of these platforms have their own weird quirks. As I've learned, as I've tried to deploy things in other places, if anybody tells you it's just as easy to deploy places that aren't Netlify or Vercel, they're full of shit. I have had miserable luck and I've put the effort in. I figured out Cloudflare for the most part, but not with anything that isn't like vanilla JavaScript. As soon as you're installing packages, Cloudflare gets rough. Yeah. As such, I can fully sympathize with why a framework maintainer, an author, doesn't want to have support for every single platform day zero. They just want to build their framework. And thanks to Nitro and Vinci, they kind of can. But with the environments API, the maintenance work that Nitro and Vinci have to do goes down a ton. And the need for them in the first place might by itself go away too, which is really cool. As Tanner calls out here, there's a lot of pieces to building a new framework, but the deployment and hosting part is obnoxious and is not what he wants his focus to be in. As he said, he initially made adapters and it was flawed from the start because there's no desire from him to be responsible for all of these different places. And yeah. Oh God, the Remix server adapters list. I'm scared. Yeah, so here's the official adapters for running Remix different places. You have Architect, Cloudflare Pages, Cloudflare Workers, which by the way, Cloudflare Pages and Workers are entirely different and separate products that like worker or Pages uses some worker stuff under the hood, but they're different and you have to deploy differently to them. And Express is also different. I know they're merging, Jacob, but they haven't merged yet. So we'll, we'll see that when that happens, but we'll see it when it happens. And then we have the pile of community adapters as well. Yeah. At least Vercel maintains the Remix one themselves, and they're not expecting the community to do it for them. But yeah, hopefully this gives you the idea of how much work it is to maintain all of these things. Wouldn't it be cool if the things that were unique to these platforms were part of Vite itself? Or at the very least, were easy to do with Vite instead of being these huge external things that have to be handled for you. And as Ryan Carniato told Tanner, I might have even been part of this convo when it happened. Ryan's the creator of Solid as well as Solid Start, and Tanner's the creator of Tanstack Start. A lot of overlap in how they're thinking about their projects. They talk all the time. Their solution was to just use Vinci, which is Nitro plus H3 plus Vite. And theoretically, all of this can get way simpler now. Like all of these tools being necessary to get this working, it shouldn't have been. I love that it could get working in the first place and that we had all these pieces to do it. And I honestly don't think if Vinci and Nitro existed that we would get where we are today. Like these pieces were necessary for us to get to a better Vite with better environment management. And I know it was bullying from the creators of these things that made a lot of this happen. And by the way, if you were curious, Puya, who's the one who helped design a lot of the API for environment stuff, is also the creator of Nitro, which is one of those core dependencies. Create web servers that run anywhere. The amount of work this dude has put in is unbelievable. He started the, the UnJS movement, which is a ton of these different pieces that make everything in the chaotic world of server plus client rendered JavaScript significantly better. H3 is phenomenal. It's a super minimal HTTP framework, kind of similar to something like uh, Hano, but really focused on server rendering and portability. And it's phenomenal. And this is one of the many things that he's built as part of UnJS including Ofetch, which is a fetch version that works in workers, node, and the browser standard, a console logger that works everywhere, a plugin system that works for everything. Yeah, all essential stuff. If you are interested in upgrading to Vite 6 and something goes wrong, they detail everything you need to know here. I'm surprised with how small these changes are. Like there are a lot of work and they set Vite up really well, but for the most part, you should be able to just upgrade without issue. Let me know if that's the case for you and tell me what framework you're most excited to see adopt the environment APIs. Until next time, please don't make me build a framework.